Hello and welcome to the second out of four sessions from the webinar series Data Migration Demystified. My name is Michael Buchholz. I'm the product owner of Openpedia Migrate, working from Germany at Frostat AG. And today I want to talk about navigating the technical maze. That means we will go through some best practices for, for mitigation of common issues that you can expect in a migration project. And yeah, I'm excited to present the information to you. So let's get going. All right, I hope you have seen the first session where I describe why and how we are doing migration discovery workshops. So if you have missed that one, have a look there. But today we want to focus on risk and pitfalls from the technical maze. So going through export, transformation and import. So if you remember our discussion on data migration strategies, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. In the end, you want to build a pipeline that is featuring an export step, a transformation step, and a load step. So that's always common to each of those data migration strategies. It just depends on how much data you have in each of the steps. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all these three steps and have a look at what kind of issues you might face in them and what might be um, strategies to mitigate those. So when we are talking about export, the first decision that you want to do is what kind of export method are you going to do? Uh, you could export the data directly from the database. That's of course giving you the best performance, but you will need to have really smart people in order to reverse engineer whatever is in the database. Also, that kind of approach is not supported by the vendor. So if you've never done that, don't do it, then ask the experts or use um, a best practice framework like Openpedia Migrate for that. You could also use the API-based export. This can be very slow because most APIs of the systems are optimized for parallel sessions because usually a PDM system is used by many users in parallel, not by one user who is trying to export everything at the same time. So um, also, if you're going for API-based export, make sure that you have the support from the vendor so that you can ask questions. If the system is no longer in maintenance, then of course you cannot do that. But if it's something that can be done, make sure that you have the support from your vendor. Um, with both approaches, you might have the problem. So either API or direct uh, export from database that not all data can be exported because some data, uh, either the API doesn't provide uh, certain interfaces for the data or the data is encrypted in the database itself. So look into these kind of issues as early as possible. For file export, when data is stored in the file system, uh, make sure that the files are not encrypted. Otherwise, you cannot export the data directly from the file system. Then you need to go through the corresponding API. Last but not least, for CAD export, always use the API which is available from the vendor. Otherwise, if you're picking the data directly from the file volumes, you might run into issues that the API actually changes the data when providing it through, um, yeah, through the API. Um, the risk that you have with pulling the data directly from the file walls is then that you cannot continue working with this kind of data. Um, when, once you have done the export, validate really this exported data. So is it complete? Did you really get everything that you need? and report the numbers that you get per data type. Then you want to know whether it's consistent, especially when you're exporting multiple sources, define how these sources are coming together. So what kind of information defines that object A is the same object in the other source and validate whether that is the case. Furthermore, talk to the customer which kind of data is very sensitive or has security issues. Uh, because if there are if there is certain data like military data that, uh, that that cannot be seen by everyone, you are running directly into compliance problems when exporting the data, either via API or via direct database. I, we even had customers that said you cannot access the database directly. You need to go through the API with a valid user in order to get the data, so that this data export is compliant. So that's something you really want to talk to the customer before doing an implementation. So communication is key. 
um, whenever you're doing exports, especially mass data for export, inform the business and inform the IT and coordinate with the IT people. Because you want to make sure that you have the right systems available, that you have all the licenses available, that you have enough network bandwidth, that you're scheduling these kind of mass data for export tests or even the productive migration, of course, for off-peak hours, that you are not um, jeopardizing the normal work of the people. And last but not least, check for system ORS maintenance windows. So you don't want to start on a weekend where the IT is planning to update all the operating systems. Then this mass data expert will not happen. So communication is key. Don't just go and export the data. Um, define the corresponding windows with the customer, with the business people, with the IT, and then go and export, um, yeah, and then run the exports. So when looking into mapping, um, the first thing that you want to do is really understand what the kind of data that you're looking at. Be a data whisperer. You need to define the types of objects. You need to define for each type of object what makes it unique. You want to define for each type of object what is the history of the object. So what kind of attributes define um, that this is a revision chain, right? Revision one, two, three, and so on. Is there a relation? Is there are are there attributes? And is there actually value? Are there values in these attributes available? Or are there any data entries, data objects where these attributes are missing? So validate that. Then typical mapping issues that we see when we are mapping between different systems is of course attribute issues. For example, you have a free text field in your source system and you have a list of value field in your target system. So you cannot put everything, just uh, certain values in the target system. Then you want to check uh, whether you can map that. Right? So either via regular expressions, for example, or using a fallback if you can't find any kind of meaningful value. So that's something that you need to discuss with the customer. Also, what is very common is that there are empty mandatory attributes. So let's say you have an attribute value or you have an attribute in the source system that is not mandatory, but in the new system, you have a mandatory attribute. So you need to provide some value. So in mapping, you want to watch out for that and really check um, if there is no value or you don't have any meaningful value to map into it, that you come up with a default value, something like for for example, migrated or anything like that, that you know that there was no um, former value in the system. So semantic issues, um, if you have, for example, a part and uh, the part has a structure, then you already know that there is something off. So validate these kind of things, which are, let's say, um, which, which can happen in systems and really look, for, look out for them and generate reports on them because these are, typically things that the customer needs to fix before doing the actual migration, right? Revision chains are always a fun topic. Um, there are many systems, especially older TDM systems, where you can face multiple issues with revision chains. For example, you have duplicated revision in the same chain. You have, um, for one revision, you may have multiple predecessors or you have different types in the same chain. So for example, revision A is a, is a part and revision B is uh, out of the sudden an assembly. So that's something that you also want to look into. Um, last but not least, some side comments for mapping. If you're facing any kind of the issues listed on the left, really report them and don't put them into a log file because parsing that out for millions of objects is very, very cumbersome. So apply a component itself to store any kind of issue identified during the mapping. Don't just throw it in log file. And furthermore, classify the identified issues. So don't just throw out an, an exception and say there is something wrong, but really give it a meaningful number that you can always refer to that number and then define what needs to be done in order to um, in, in order to get rid of that kind of issue. So for example, with OpenPDM, as our OpenPDM migration platform, we have all of that directly in the system. So you don't have to create anything in Python or, or whatever, it's already there. And last but not least, when you're mapping into the new system, also check downstream integrations. So you may have, um, after the data is in the target system, this data will also be worked on later on. 
So make sure that it can be consumed by the downstream integrations because this can have impacts also on the mapping itself. So whenever it comes to import, performance is something that you really want to work out with uh, your customer, with, with the customer. Because expectation is always that you can import, that you can mass import data in a breeze of time. And that's not the reality when we are talking about modern systems. It always will take a major amount of time for importing mass data. So runtime is also inside a project, inside a migration project, a major cost driver. Because every day that you're spending with importing data, the business can effectively not work on that data. And also you need to work with people. So there is a workload behind that every day to monitor and uh, maybe fix, fix issues during the import time. So uh, also the preparation of going through such, uh, through, through such a migration project takes a lot of time because you want to make certain rehearsal tests with full data migrations. And also that of course then takes a lot of time and well, money. The longer it takes, the more money it consumes for, uh, from a performance point of view. So metadata is usually quite okay when it comes for, for import, but what you really want to look into is CAD file handling. If there is a way to import the data, the CAD files directly into the system without going through the API, then okay, go for it. But make sure that the vendor supports your approach, right? Because when you're asking the vendor, I want to upload CAD files directly, the usual answer is no, you have to go through the actual API. Otherwise the metadata that is uh, coming up in the target system does not match how it should look when you're going through the API. So that's something that you want to really make sure if you want to upload the data directly. We at ProStip use approaches that are uh, signed off by the corresponding vendors. So um, that way we can do the imports quite well. Uh, furthermore, use parallel imports. So if possible, group the data and create packages that can be imported in parallel. Um, that will be a major performance um, driver that you get a way better performance for the imports. And during the imports, make sure that you identify bottlenecks, right? In your test or your HODL um, migrations, really perform system inspection. How much CPU, how much memory is currently consumed, what's the network load, how much free space do I have, and so on. Because in the productive migration, you don't want to fail at any of these. I uh, always validate your infrastructure before doing the actual productive migration. Last but not least, um, the section CAD. So again, when you're importing CAD, go through the official APIs. That's the best thing that you can do. Um, there can be CAD data that cannot be imported through those APIs and they will fail. So evaluate that and fix the CAD data either in the source system or in the pipeline. For viewing formats, um, generate those before or the actual import or generate them after the import, but try not to generate those during the import because those this generation takes a lot of time, right? And last but not least, when we are talking about APIs, check whether the vendor also supports uh, this kind of API in batch because there are some CAD APIs which simply do not work in batch, only interactive, and that would be a show blocker for your um, batch migration. So as we have seen uh, with some examples on the slides before for export, for transformation and for import, there are quite some things that you want to look out for during um, migration projects and implementations of those migration projects. When my recommendation is that starting a migration project, you need to have people in the project who really know what kind of issues you can face and what are good mitigation strategies for those. And many of the issues that you're facing um, can simply be solved by knowledge. And our knowledge from ProStep side, this is a best practice implementation. All of this knowledge is already available in OpenPD Migrate in our migration product directly to use and ramp up your migration project very efficiently. So my recommendation is start with a proven toolkit, talk to ProStep, and let us check what we can do for you in order to make your migration project a success. So thank you very much for listening to today's uh, Data Migration Demystified session. I hope to see you in the next one. Till then.